Today we celebrate the second Sunday in our Lenten season, and we are reminded that by His transfiguration, Jesus shows us that the radiance of His glory comes from His acceptance of the sufferings and trials of the, uh, by the, as foretold by the law and the prophets. The cross brought Jesus to the glory of Easter, which his transfiguration foreshadows. May we see our trials and our difficulties as opportunities for growing in faith and in hope. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is said that hunters in India use a simple trick to capture monkeys. And what do they do? First, the hunter fastens a piece of, a, a, a piece of long cord on a tree. And on the other side, on the other end, he attaches a coconut shell. And the coconut shell has a small, a, a hole big enough for a monkey to put, uh, to put his hand into. And inside the coconut, the trader put some nuts or something that would attract, some food that will attract the monkey. Then he hides and waits for a monkey to fall for his trap. And monkeys are very curious, and so sooner or later, a monkey discovers the contents of the coconut. And the coconut shell. So the monkey then puts his hand into the coconut shell, and grabs the snack. But because its fist is clenched, it could not pull out its hand of the narrow opening. No matter how hard he pulls, it, his hand would not go through the hole no longer because his hand is clenched. His fist is clenched. And therefore, the monkey is trapped and the hunter then proceeds to capture it. And the question is, are monkeys really that stupid to fall for such a trap? And we ask ourselves, why don't the monkeys simply let go of the snack so that they can pull out their hand once again and set themselves free? But maybe we too are like the monkeys. We stubbornly hang on to things that are important to us and even if it harms us, even if it enslaves us, we are too stubborn to let go of these possessions, of these things that are dear to us. And because we are not free, then we are not free to receive the things that God really wants to give us. Our, 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 our fists are clenched, and therefore we are not free to receive whatever else the Lord wants to give us. Today, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the chosen scripture passage, passages invites us 
to surrender, to let go of the things important to us so that we can receive the things that are important to the Lord. Our readings today remind us that we ought to let go of everything so that we can be, we can be free to receive everything that the Lord wants, to, wants us to receive. And what does it mean to, to surrender? Perhaps we may learn the true meaning of surrender by putting ourselves in the shoes of Abraham or the sandals of Abraham and see what true surrender is all about. We all know that Abraham and Sarah had longed for a son for so many years and from their youth to their old age, they always had longed for a son. And the Lord promised Abraham for years that he would bless him with a son and a and, and son through whom he would fulfill his promise of making him a father of a great nation. But Abraham and Sarah were very old. And worse, Sarah was barren. And the couple attempt to find a solution to this by asking a slave girl, their slave girl, Hag Hagar, which was the, it, was a, it was a practice of the past, of making a slave girl bear a son for them because a couple, one of the, one of the, 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 one of the, the, the spouses in a, uh, is, is not able to bear a child or is barren. And therefore, they asked their slave girl, Hagar, to bear them a son, and she eventually bore them a son, which, he, which they named Ishmael. But the Lord revealed to, 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 to Abraham that it is not through Ishmael that he would fulfill his promise. And so, the situation and the promise seemed impossible because they were old and Sarah was barren. Not until a miracle happened. Sarah conceives and they were given a son whom they named Isaac. And he is described to be Abraham's only one, Abraham's precious one. But one day the Lord invites Abraham to, 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 to offer Isaac as a human sacrifice. And you can imagine the pain in Abraham's heart having to give up his one and only, his precious one, his only possession. And Abraham, with a heavy heart, agrees to the request, even if it seemed that the Lord was asking Abraham to kill a promise that they have long waited to be fulfilled. And so, Abraham sets forth with Isaac to Mount Moriah, where the sacrifice is to take place carrying wood, fire, and a knife. And all along the three-day journey, Abraham had to answer Isaac's curiosity about why they were going to do, uh, they were going to sacrifice without bringing any animal. When they arrive at the place of sacrifice, Abraham gathers the wood, lights the fire, binds Isaac, and then raises the knife to finally kill Isaac and offer him to the Lord. But God intervenes, stops the sacrifice, and gives Abraham a ram instead to offer. And the story ends with Abraham walking back to his own land together with Isaac. And Abraham and, 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 God's, and God's promise to Abraham was eventually fulfilled. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Abraham was put to the test, and he passed the test. He was ready to go through with something that is horrible and painful for him, a painful sacrifice because he had faith and trust that the Lord only means well for him, that everything will end up well. And his attitude was enough to show that the Lord came first in his life. And the Lord himself said, I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in today's second reading, Paul reminds us that the Lord spared Abraham's son, but he did not hesitate to sacrifice his own son. 
And by quote in, 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 Paul's, in Paul's letter, If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? In other words, in giving up His only begotten Son for our sake, the Father showed that He was willing to give up everything else because He gave up His most precious possession. He is willing to give up everything else just to redeem us back from evil. Just as Abraham showed how the Lord had first place in his life through His willingness to sacrifice His Son, the Lord shows us that we are first in His life. We are first in His life. Sacrificing His only begotten Son shows that there's nothing He is not willing to do for us. And now, the question is, how do we respond to a loving and merciful and generous God? Ignatius of Loyola proposes that we respond in love by generously surrendering and putting everything at the disposal of the Father. He teaches, a, teaches us a prayer of surrender. And that prayer goes this way. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all that I have and possess, you have given them all to me, to you, Lord, I now return it. Everything is yours. Dispose of it wholly according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. The prayer invites us to hold all our gifts before the Lord. It's like holding out a tray and putting all our gifts, all our possessions, all our loved ones, everything that is dear to us, putting it on a tray and allowing the Lord to fill our tray with His blessings. But we also allow Him to be free to take away anything that is on the tray. Because we know that the Lord gives and the Lord will always give, but we allow Him to take if this is what prevents us from loving Him. This attitude of surrender is that attitude that Abraham had. He loved the Lord so much to put God in the forefront of his life that everything else, including his son Isaac, his beloved son Isaac, everything else is secondary. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we can sometimes be like the monkeys I described earlier, who stubbornly hold on to things that keep us from truly receiving the gifts that the Lord wants us to have. And so in this Lenten season, we try to identify that knot that the Lord wants us to let go of. That not that we stubbornly hold on, that we stubbornly possess, but the Lord wants us to let go of. God asked Abraham to lay down his to lay down his son Isaac. His story is an incredible, incredible picture of the cross and how God loved us enough to surrender his only son Jesus just to win us back from evil. Does the Lord come first in our lives? like just as we are first to the Lord in the Lord's life. How do we love Him? Do we love Him enough to surrender our Isaac today just as the Lord was, was willing to surrender His only begotten Son? What is our Isaac and what that the Lord wants us to willingly surrender to Him today? My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in this Lenten season, we are asked to surrender that Isaac that comes between our loving the Lord and surrendering everything to the Lord. May we be generous with our love and our response to a very generous and loving God. Amen. 
And for your assignment during this Lenten season, we are asked to abstain and to do fasting, no? Abstain from meat during Fridays and to fast during special days like Good Friday and Ash Wednesday. And the good news is that practice lang po ito. Practice, it is practice for something greater. During this time of Lent, in, on Fridays, we give up fish, we give up things that we like, we give up Netflix, we give up chocolates. And, and, and I see a lot of young people who are really doing it, and that is a good thing. But my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, it is just a simple practice so that we can give up the greater things that the Lord asks us to give up, to give up our Isaacs. Kung may mga sama ng loob tayo or meron tayong mga possessions that we hang on to, anything that gets in the way of our loving relationship to God and to our neighbor, that is an Isaac. And the things that we want, because ang, ang problema natin is we want to control our lives, but we cannot. As we can see in the life of Isaac, Isaac wanted God to fulfill his promise, so he had his, his, his slave girl, Hagar, have a child. Pero sabi ng Panginoon, that is not the way I will fulfill my promise. It is through a son. And they cannot imagine how the Lord will do it, but Abraham surrendered. He could not imagine how the Lord will fulfill his promise if he killed Isaac, but he trusted and he surrendered everything to the Lord. And in surrendering everything to the Lord, we are, like, we are not like the monkeys no? who hold on to the possessions. We open our hands and let go so that God can fill us with the things that he wants. So in this Lenten season, especially those who are older already, we ask ourselves, what is the Isaac that the Lord wants you to surrender to Him? What Isaac does the Lord want you to surrender to Him? And if you have a difficult time surrendering, perhaps this short prayer might help. Dear Lord, let Your will be done, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else but Your will. Amen.